Hello, and welcome to another episode of the William Branham Historical Research Podcast. I'm your host, John Collins, the author and founder of William Branham Historical Research at william-branham.org. And with me, I have my co-host, researcher, and friend, James Goad. And together, we're discussing the very weird things that preachers say, why they say them, and how they relate back to the latter rain healing revivals of the late 1940s through the 1960s. James, I don't know about you, but growing up in this thing that we did, it seemed like there was always this new and exciting way in which somebody could receive the mark of the beast <laughs> in every church that I went to. <laughs> they all had a different spin on how it would happen and where it would go, and um, you've been researching some of the things that people are saying, and it just all it all sounds so familiar because if you were in this in any duration of time, you know, over over a decade of time, then you saw new and exciting ways in which this could play out. And some of the older ones are really quite comical when you think about it, because the new doctrines, as they're introduced and into the movements, the new doctrines really aren't compatible <laughs> with the, the former marks <laughs> of the beast. And there were several marks of the beast. And that started even you know, even with William Branham and the healing revivals, he had many, many different versions of how this would play out. And so you've got all of these men that think that they have the greatest idea of, of taking one of those marks of the beast and making it fit today's news somehow. And it's, it's just so incredibly weird. Yeah. It's one of those things that, um, when you're in a movement like the one we came out of, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is used to scare and, and manipulate people and put people in, uh, in, in, in order. Um, <laughs> you know, because it's like, oh, this mark of the beast, you're going to get this mark of the beast. If you don't do exactly what we say or believe exactly what we believe, and then you will be, um, condemned to eternal damnation or whatever, you know, and it's, it's, it's so silly, especially when, um, you look into some of the things that have been said about the mark of the beast and then you go back and look at the primary sources and you see how people i guess tend to manipulate things for their own viewpoints to get their own views across and to to back up um what they want the text to say not what the text says itself um so uh yeah that's been a very interesting thing and um you know <laughs> digging into this has uh um has been a very fun and very interesting and 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 you know, I, I've learned things about this that I didn't know when I started. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget when I started the journey of looking into the marks of the beast. I thought it was Mark of the Beast because <laughs> there was supposed to be this consistent message. And it was always supposed to be consistent through time because it was the end time message, the message to <laughs> a lost and dying world. And so it must be consistent, right? But... Whenever I started piecing together the timeline of history, of world history in general, United States history, world history, and the history of the chronology of the sermons that we had, and started just lining things up to see how it worked, that's when I began to realize that this was a very political cult. It was not a religious cult. It was a political cult disguised as religion. And you could take current themes of the biggest fears in politics of the era, and you could line that up with what would become the mark of the beast for that era. Then, as that threat began to diminish, then the mark of the beast would shift to something else. And in the early days, it was, you know, during the Red Scare, it was communism was eventually lead to the mark of the beast. This communism would rise to a one world government that would include a one world religion and that one world religion of communism would be the mark of the beast. You'd either join into the one world religion of communism or not, which is kind of funny since communism isn't a religion. But then as, <laughs> as the, you know, towards the end of this, as the red scare started to shift to other focuses, 
Then <laughs> there's this quote I found where uh, Branham is saying, and you ministers who are preaching against communism being the mark of the beast, it's not the mark of the beast. And so he's like turning on himself, if you had <laughs> those earlier recordings. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started noticing that and then started thinking in my mind about all of the different ministers that I've heard over the years and all of the different churches who are using the mark of the beast <laughs> the marks of the beast, I should say, as a whip to beat you into religious submission. And even if you take the early versions of them compared to the latter versions of them, they're preaching against themselves. And so this mark of the beast turns into a, I almost call it the doctrine of implosion, because it cannot stand as a consistent theme because it has shifted so greatly over time. Consistency is one thing that you will not find when you look into what different ministers say on this topic. And it goes, it goes from anywhere and everywhere and in between. Um, you've got some ministers look at this as like, this is a physical mark. Um, you know, this brings up, you know, images of, you know, uh, computer chips and things like that. And then you've got other people who take it more of like, no, this is a spiritual thing. Um, and, you know, when you walk into, uh, these different churches that um, that have an idea on what the mark of the beast is and things like that, you know, you're 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 bound to get one of these variations, and 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 probably some that I haven't even heard of yet. There's all sorts of just just wild, wild variations on what people think about the mark of the beast. Um, but you know, one of the things that you do see is that it's used as a as as a as a way to control people and manipulate them with fear that, you know, especially when you have a group that says, we have the truth. This is the truth. We believe the truth. And if you reject this truth, then you have taken on the spiritual mark of the beast. And in doing so, you have condemned yourself to the fate of the beast. And, you know, it's, it's kind of scary sometimes when you see some of the stuff going on in some of these churches, and especially the, the wild and crazy, just bad doctrines that they're attaching to this stuff and then attach the fear on top of it but uh um but yeah let's uh let's roll into this clip here and uh and see what we think now, now folks think when they talk about the mark of the beast oh glory to god everybody's going to get an rfd chip and we're going to get tattooed across the forehead and they're going to come up with this thing and that thing and we'll have to show some kind of you know identification it'll be like a blue light and infrared or something on our wrist friend i don't doubt somewhere down the road They'll invent some little thing that they'll, they'll plug into your arm, but that is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is a spiritual mark. Would you like to know what the mark of the beast is? Would you? The mark of the beast is rejecting the Holy Ghost. And I'm not just talking about the Holy Ghost falling on you and making you go, Woo, glory to God. I'm talking about rejecting the Word of God in its season and its hour. When you reject the men of God, when you reject the people of God, when you reject the move of the Holy Spirit with all of our faults, with all of our failures, brother, we still have the smitten rock. We still have the pillar of fire. Amen. You can look at our backsides all you want, but we've still got the Holy Ghost amongst this message. Oh, boy, man. So if you spiritualize it, <laughs> it, can, it can go anywhere you want. I, I spiritualize exactly. this, and therefore it's in the spirit realm. It's not in the physical. I grew up in the day in which there was a fear that they were actually going to inject a microchip in you. And you <laughs> it was like the 1984 movie where government's always watching you. They're tracking you. And this was a real scare, not just among the message clan and all of their splinter groups. But <laughs> in general, people were scared that this was going to happen. And although the logistics of how that would happen are insane when you try to think about it. It's, it's nearly impossible. What happened was over time, especially as the cell phone is introduced, once you have a cell phone, you don't need a chip to track you. <laughs> they know exactly where you are at all times with this thing, right? And in fact, they, there are now fears that it might become the mark of the beast. And, and it becomes a new mark of the beast in, in saying this. 
But during the era of time in which you would sit through a sermon in any of these splinter groups and you'd hear the microchip is coming, the microchip is coming. I heard this over and over from some of these guys. <laughs> well, they had to abandon it because that's no longer the fear, right? I can't scare you with this anymore. So they take it out of the physical realm and put it into the spiritual realm, something that you can't tangibly understand and <laughs> it becomes an even greater fear because you don't know what it is <laughs> yeah the, the mark of the beast is something that you know I, I remember hearing growing up in 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 cult churches and you know it was always something used to to instill fear and it was always in in my group it was always more similar to this that you know you would have a a spiritual sort of thing that come upon people to mark them when they rejected, you know, the truth that we believed as the, you know, light of the day, the, you know, the, the meat and due season and all this sort of stuff, you know, um, you know, the word of the hour, you know, if, if you believe that, then you were safe from the mark of the beast. But, you know, if you rejected it and you went out into the world and, and, you know, you started to think for yourself, then that's that, that right there, that's the mark of the beast, brother, you know, because, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta put everything, everything that could be a problem, everything got to put it on the shelf, you know, because you start getting your own thinking involved. And, and this is, this is, this is where the devil's going to get involved and start, you know, getting control of your mind. And then the final result of that is taking on the mark of the beast because he's going to rip away your belief in what they present as the truth you know now that does a lot for people when they're trying to get away from some of these types of movements because these things bury deep down in their subconscious and you know even in their their conscious mind and um you know they don't want to be <laughs> they don't want to have the mark of the beast they don't want to they don't want to be <laughs> condemned to hell you know it's it's a very rational thing not to want to be associated with a demonic force you know but um you know it's one of those things when you start really digging into what's said and um you know what, what's said in your movement and then even when you start going out beyond that and look at like what do biblical scholars say about this sort of stuff and 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 what is the actual consensus about what the mark of the beast might actually be it is so night and day difference that it makes you go how in the world could i have believed that it was this thing and not only that you take it a step further and you look at how it's even used in popular culture today i mean it's something that you know it's used in movies to to you know to you know and you know for a fearful sort of impact like oh we want to we want to pick on some sort of demonic um um sort of iconography and so, so, so they'll use um they'll use like 666 is like ooh a scary little tagline in the movie you know but you know it it gets blown up and then you know you look at how people talk about it today and it's like oh the mark of the beast is 5g or the mark of the beast is a computer chip or the mark of the beast is is a vaccination shot and all these different things like that you know and it just it's used so widely and perversely just just throughout our our culture that it it, it really makes your head spin when you start digging into it it really is odd you know <clears throat> this like i said this was a political cult and they're trying to find ways to bind the Bible and especially the apocalyptic themes of the Bible to modern events and say that they, they have the answers. They alone have the answers to what's coming and how and be scared. <laughs> I mean, that's really if, <laughs> if you were to to describe what is the message, that is the message. Be scared. <laughs> I mean, really, it's all it is. <clears throat> I, I recently started studying for both the work I'm doing with Charles and with Steve, I started studying the, um, there's a, a book called The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. And if you study the history of this book, it is mind boggling because this book was spread throughout the globe as a, it, it touted itself as a legitimate Jewish plot of global world domination. And it started talking about things that, you could very easily apply to the book of Revelation, such as the Jewish control of the banking systems, the um, 
Freemasonry. The, <laughs> the Jewish would invade the Masonic lodges and they would sway public opinion through them. The education system. I mean, every single thing that we heard growing up that all of these ministers were blasting, you can find it in this book. And the book was pure fiction. It wasn't real. They have identified the sources from which it was plagiarized, you know, years later. But it was brought into the United States through this figure we've mentioned a few times, Gerald Burton Winrod, who was working with Branham's mentor, Roy Davis, and with <clears throat> he collaborated with F.F. F. Bosworth, some different key figures that um, – you know, led to the birth of the latter rain movement. Well, all of these themes became th the themes in this book, the protocols of the learned elders of Zion became themes that were foundational to the latter rain movement and its splinter groups. And each one of these themes were, like I said, apocalyptic themes of this conspiracy theory. So what you have are all of these ministers who are trained because they have a foundation of conspiracy theory they're trained to use new conspiracy theories to further implement this original conspiracy theory. One of the interesting things, and this is something that I I started getting interested about um, when I was uh, looking into the some of the research that you and Charles were putting out on some of the on the the earlier episodes, and uh, you know, especially looking into some of this stuff like. Um, you know, Paul Kane and Kansas City Prophets and you know you can get, go down today and and people like Mike Bickle and it's like all these people have a lineage that carries back to Branham. And it's like, you know, you know, somebody like Mike Bickle may may say that they they don't have a lineage to Branham, but they have a lineage to Paul Kane, which has a lineage all the way back to Branham. You know, so it's it's very interesting when you start looking at some of these things and seeing how they you know, you follow these, follow these, all these trails as they branch out from a central figure like William Branham and, and see how some of these things move into today and how you have movements who are more, more secularized and less, um, less hidden, more in public view. So it's very interesting how some of these things morph and they take on, um, sort of a mind of their own and, and it, yeah, just a, just a life of their own as they keep going. Um, and then you have, you know, some of these ministers who, you know, they, they, they people come to them and ask them, you know, what, what is this, what, what is this mark of this beast? And is it a computer chip? Is it whatever? And then, and then you find, you know, the, the questions that are, that are, or the answers that are given to the questions are sometimes even more confusing than the, than the person who asked the question in the beginning because they were confused. So they, they asked somebody about what's going on. And, and that's what's going on in this next clip. You have, um, a woman and, and this appears to be a questions and answers sort of thing going on. And she's asking him what the mark of the beast is and is a computer chip. And, and I don't know, the, 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 it sort of ensues from here. <laughs> and I guess we can just roll the clip and, uh, and go from there. But we know there will be an Antichrist world system. That doesn't mean we bow down because it could be different if we resist than we know, but we don't know till we resist. So I think that we should take a stand and speak against it and do things, not just to say, well, it's going to happen anyway, let's just give up and give in. Why polish brass on a sinking, sinking ship? You know, that's what some people say. It's going to fall apart anyway. Why figure, why worry about it? Because you don't know what region there will be a redemptive breakthrough and not fall apart because all of the regions of the world will be different. You know, like the verse that says, as the waters cover the sea, the glory of God will be like the waters cover the sea. Well, the waters, some place are five miles deep. Other places, they're five feet deep. Some places, the water is dirty. Some place is clean. Some place, the water is cold. Some place, it's hot. Some place, the wind is blowing. Some place, it's not. The water, everywhere is different. And the glory of God, there will be depths of the glory and depths of depravity and the region next will be different so we should push for everything righteous you never know what your region might do and because it will be like the glory of god's like the ocean it's this diversity everywhere and so that's why we keep staying in the battle and we keep pushing forward righteousness and we don't quite know so we don't give in but we do know there will be a world system okay i'm extremely confused so you were saying that if you get the mark like if you have not the mark you said the chip yes if you get the chip 
when you like need to go to the hospital or something. Well, I mean, people what? have the chip now is what I'm pointing at. What? See so, yeah, how people have the chip now, yeah. What in the world? Not not the mark of the beast chip. Okay, so you're so the chip and the mark are different. Yes, but the mark will use the chip technology. So it's okay to get the chip, but don't get the mark. What's I, the mark? Look like? I don't like the chip, but so I don't want to even say the words. It's okay to get the chip, but the chip <laughs> is not the mark of the beast. Like shuck it down. Like what is the mark? <laughs> What's it look like? Like, get with it, right? Yeah, like all the way down. Just okay. say it straight. You saw that one movie, 666 on the guy's head, okay? You saw that movie? Yes. That's it. No. No, I no. think, no. <laughs> I think it will, it will be a technology that is based on what the chip is now. <laughs> so we're back to the microchips again. <laughs> I, I had actually forgotten about this one. I had heard that ministers were doing this because <clears throat> the, one of the COVID vaccines that um, came to be very effective was this mRNA, where it was a digital blueprint. It was a I said digital. It was a blueprint telling your body how to fight the disease as it came in. And because it wasn't like the vaccines of old, this was a new and exciting thing. There came to be this conspiracy theory that as they're injecting you with this new immunization or this, uh, this new way of fighting off the COVID virus, they were also implanting microchips in your body. And this was the mark of the beast. So therefore don't get the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's so crazy about this is, is when you when you examine what's going on here in in this clip, and and this person is genuinely confused because they 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 just like any rational person wouldn't want the mark of the beast because you know that's a bad thing, and and you know you've got all this stuff going around about chips and COVID and all this stuff, and you got this minister that's kind of waffling back and forth like, oh the chip's kind of bad, but you know, but at the same time, you know, it's like you know the in the chip may, might be the mark of the beast, but you know, but you know. It, it's like, but, you know, you can't, like, accidentally take the mark of the beast. So, like, if <laughs> if you, uh, if someone injects you without your knowledge or, like, you don't know it's the mark of the beast, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> it's like, it, oh, man, if you if you just go um, look into some of this stuff, it, 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 you know, if you just go read the scriptures on in Revelation about the mark of the beast and stuff and, and, <sighs> It really makes this stuff look silly. Very, very silly. You know, because, you know, the book of Revelation is a very wild book in its own right. But at the same time, you've got ministers who take and even make it even more wild because they have to inject all their current day meanings and all their current day things to have some sort of a special revelation that helps get people excited and stirred up and build a movement around themselves, you know, because they have the understanding of what the mark of the beast is. And if you're not careful, ooh, you might get the mark of the beast, you know? So it's just, there's all this massive amounts of confusion that, that spring up around these things and ministers just take this stuff and run with it. And, and it's so sad when you look at people who are just honestly looking at themselves and being like, man, I'm, I want to be a good person. I, I, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm in this because I'm trying to better myself. And they're telling me this mark that I could get if I act the wrong way or I take the wrong vaccine or whatever, you know, and they're like, I don't want to do that. And so they're, they're, they're tore up inside and they're trying to find answers. And then, and then you have this situation where they're just, it, I, I feel like the lady was even more confused by the end of this than when she started, you know, and it's just, <laughs> yeah. but see, that's what you get a lot of times. You, all you get is confusion from a lot of this stuff because some of these ministers just throw stuff out. The problem is these men have created a platform in which they are the answer man rather than just simply share the gospel in its simplicity as humble servants as <laughs> like they tout themselves many of them as being they want to become more than this they realize that unfortunately many people are no longer satisfied with just hearing the gospel they also want to come and know what is in my future and how do i wade <laughs> through this mess of the world today i'm coming to you oh spiritual guru for the answers of today <laughs> and what happens is these guys become fortune tellers and it becomes a series of fortune telling and 
they'll give you the answers and they'll say many of them will even say that it came from God or it was divinely inspired or I was studying alone last night and God spoke to me in a, <laughs> in a vision or a dream or he had me turn to this exact page in the Bible and I said thus and thus. And so what happens is whenever whatever is their current revelation of the day changes and it turns out to be wrong, <laughs> they, they wipe the slate clean and they start over and say, ignore that thing that I just said came from God. That one didn't. This new thing did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I did do um, when I was looking into this topic, you know, is, is trying to get some other opinions on this whole Mark of the Beast thing, because I know how I was raised and what I was taught, you know, because I was taught that the Mark of the Beast was the Catholic Church and the Pope and all this stuff like that. And, it, you know, there's all this stuff because this, this is stuff that comes from Branham. And, uh, you know, w when you when you look into what scholars say today about the Mark of the Beast, you know, they go, go through and analyze, the, you know, Revelation when it was written and the, and the landscape of the world at the time. And, you know, because one of the things, and, and this is a thing that ministers love, and, and you'll always hear a minister when they start talking about this, the, the, they'll really pause on, on the phrase, um, you know, that it takes understanding to understand what the mark of the beast is, you know, and it, and it's, you know, cause the number of the beast is the number of a man. And they, they love that sort of thing about understanding because it sort of builds into the thing of the special revelation that they have because they understand who the mark of the beast actually is. But, and this is something that you can do. And, and, and I encourage people to do is, is to look into what some of the, um, you know, some of the scholars and stuff today say, but when you, when you break it down, um, the 666 appears to refer to the Emperor Nero, who is famous for persecuting Christians. And it's one of the things that even like you look at, you know, talking about the mark of the beast, one of the things that, you know, is brought up in, in by these scholars is that, you know, the mark you know, buying, you, you can't even buy or, or, or sell without the mark. Well, in, in, in Rome, you needed the official Roman currency and, and whose image was upon the mark, but Nero. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's very, very interesting. And, and I know that there's even still some debate around some of that stuff, but, but I know this is just completely night and day difference from everything that I was taught growing up. And, and it just, it feels so much more rational than anything else I ever knew existed before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never will forget <clears throat> the first church that we went to after we left the cult. <clears throat> the The apocalyptic themes were plaguing my mind because you're brought up in this mindset that you have to know the answers, and if you don't, you're doomed to hell. That's really, in essence, that's what they're telling you. And I went to my new church, and I heard a sermon they were preaching on chapters in the book of Revelation. They didn't do it in the same way as they did in the cult. Instead, they took the position that we don't know what's going to happen. Here's what the Bible said. Here are some things that we do know has happened, and you make your own decision. And I was like, no, man, I, I came to you for the answers because that's how we were trained and manipulated. Right. And so afterwards, I started talking with all of them because I was just I was dying to know what they believed. And I'll never forget this. I was in a room with different elders of the church, the pastor, the assistant pastor. We actually had a couple of assistant pastors at that time, um, some different elders. And pastor told me what he believed, and it was the, I think it was the futuristic version. It was similar to what Branham had in some versions of his weird mess that he had. <clears throat> taking away all the communism and white supremacy and all the other stuff he added to it. <laughs> but it was the futuristic version. And <clears throat> there was another guy there that he was, he took the preterist stand and he was leaning more towards the, I think his position was, yes, 666 was Nero in the currency, but there are other things that are in the future. And so he was kind of waffling between different versions and, <clears throat> There, there were four different views from four different men, and my head was spinning like, how do you allow this? You can't let them say that because that defies what you say. And 
I came to realize that that's the way it is. You don't have all the answers. We don't know what's going to happen. And a friend of mine said, I asked him if he was a pre-millennialist or a post-millennialist, and he said, I'm a pan-millennialist. It'll all pan out in the end. <laughs> and I don't care how we get there. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, that that's a very good way to approach it because, you know, there's so many situations where people get caught up in wanting to know the answer. And because they want to know the answer, you know, this kind of gets into the whole itching ears thing, then there's a ton of people out there who will give you an answer, you know, because a lot of times giving you an answer to something like that gives them a lot of notoriety and a lot of fame and a lot of accolades. And so, and it also helps build a following around them because if they have an answer to something that apparently nobody else does, then they're more inclined to hear you when you have something to say the next time because you had such a special revelation the first time. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of this stuff is, is been used very in a very negative way to manipulate people and to extract money out of people to, um, to build their followings and to have, uh, and, and to build up the, <laughs> and to build up the authenticity of their special movement because they know the answers of revelation. But, you know, and, and like that man said to you, just it'll all pan out in the end. And that's, <clears throat> that's sort of something that I've personally, um, just sort of, take more of a stance on is like, you know what? I don't have to have all the answers on everything because it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's it'll, it'll, the, the truth will rise to the top eventually. You know, if you spend <laughs> yeah. enough time researching and looking at all the facts and, and not getting in such a tizzy over, you know, do I know what the mark of the beast means right now? Because if I don't know what the mark of the beast means, then I might actually get the mark of the beast. And if I actually get the mark of the beast, then I'm doomed to, for all eternity. It's just like, just, just, just chill, <laughs> just do your research, <laughs> look and see what people are saying. And, 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 you know, don't always rush into this thing. Like I have to have an answer for this thing right now, because that's when these people will rise up being like, Oh, you have to have an answer right now. Well, I have an answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, take it back to the new Testament days. They, they were looking for the Messiah. There were prophecies of the Messiah and these men were developing ways in which they could predict <laughs> that the Messiah was coming. And then when he came, it was nothing like they thought. It was not this military presence that would come and just eradicate Rome and wipe them off of the face of the map like they were predicting. Instead, here's here's a guy who's speaking humbly and he's you know, giving people loaves of bread and fishes. <laughs> it was nothing like they thought. <clears throat> but yet some of those people who were of that mindset and had that understanding that it was a military force that was coming, the Messiah would come and create a military defense of Jerusalem. Well, many of those people who thought that were became Christians, right? So they had the wrong idea. Then they saw the real thing and they accepted the real thing. If you were to ask any one of these men in the cult who claim to be Christian, ignore the ones that there are some who are not. I'll just <laughs> I'll say it like that and leave it like that. But any of the ministers who claim to be Christian, ask them if the, the end of day scenario that they're preaching, if someone understood it incorrectly and then towards the end of time saw the truth and accepted the truth, would they make it into heaven or would they be doomed to hell? The ones that are Christian would say, well, of course, you go to heaven, which then renders every single thing that they've said you have to know completely irrelevant. <laughs> this whole Mark of the Beast stuff just, it, it can become so damaging because people would use it to roll it into something that they don't like or that they're opposed to. Um, and it's like, if you're opposed to something, it's better just to take an argument that's based in fact and then use that to build your argument to, to go against something. But a lot of times you'll see ministers take and they'll say, well, X, Y, Z is the mark of the beast or X, Y, Z is leading to the mark of the beast because they can't really... Um, debate something. Maybe they don't have the, the knowledge, the scientific knowledge, the medical knowledge, whatever. So they go and they use, oh, it's the mark of the beast. And so, you know, you have a situation here where a minister is, you know, talking about how, you know, vaccination mandates and things like that and, and, and how it can roll in to the mark of the beast. And, and, uh, it's very interesting. So, uh, so let's let the minister speak for himself and see what we think. Let's keep our eyes open, praise God. Let's not fall asleep at this hour. 
it's, 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 it's slowly bringing to head. And we know the coronavirus and the vaccine, vaccine mandates. It's just a prefigure to the mark of the beast. Right? Mandates. It's just a prefigure where they're going to mandate worship with us or you cannot buy or sell. But Brother Man tells us Christ will rescue the bride right before the mark is laid down. A precursor to the mark of the beast. You know, we just need a minister to rise up and say, COVID-19, I blow the wind of God on you. <laughs> COVID-19! COVID-19! I blow the wind of God on you. On you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, these men, they will take whatever is the current fear of the day. And in this case, you know, it was a, the pandemic was a global fear. It wasn't even just centralized into the United States, like some of the marks of the beast. So this was a global fear and they capitalized and made a lot of money off of it. And in my opinion, if you take something that, people are truly scared of that they're seeking spiritual guidance for help and you take it and turn it into something that makes you money you are no better than a pot petty thief you're no better than a common criminal and that's what these guys are doing it's crazy because you know people can have whatever opinion they want and they can um and they can think whatever they want about some of these things. But at the same time, when you start going into a religious context and when you start trying to use things like the mark of the beast to elicit fear in people instead of rationally thinking about some of these things, especially when some of these things like a pandemic and stuff like that, this should be something that someone, a conversation someone has between their doctor, not between their spiritual leader. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, you know, th th these, these, these roles are, are, are reversed here. We should, we, sh we shouldn't be having these conversations, but you know, it's just, and especially when, you know, like I said, when you roll it into the fear of the mark of the beast and, and it's like, oh, well, these vaccine mandates are, are, are leading us to to the mark of the beast. It's like, so if something is leading you to something, then that something is probably evil. And then all these things. And it's like, you know, it, it, it really, it really strikes me as just things that are very, um, ill-informed. And, and like I said, if you're, if you're going to try to make an argument about something, you probably shouldn't start at the mark of the beast. <laughs> you should probably come to something <laughs> with facts and logic and then try to tear it down. And then if, I guess if you've got it completely destroyed, then maybe you can bring in the mark of the beast for fun. But you know, I wouldn't start there. <laughs> I'm, I'm still just, my head's trying to think about the facts and the logic. I've, there's so many cases in which this <laughs> completely undermines the whole premise of many of these sermons. But you're right. <clears throat> you sh this is a conversation for a doctor. And unfortunately, in the way that this movement developed, this was your doctor. This was your spiritual mentor, your doctor, your... In many ways, this was your Holy Ghost. You go, you know, the Bible said the Holy Spirit would lead us into all truth. Well, many of these people come because... They want the minister, the central figure, the evangelist, whatever is their current guy that they've lifted up onto a pedestal. That's their one who's leading them into all truth, unfortunately. And they just take the Holy Spirit out of it. You don't really need that guy. <laughs> you need the guy on the platform that's saying, be healed and I'll blow the <laughs> blow COVID-19 away from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, you know, and, and that even... It even gets crazier when you have um, ministers who use um, hoax videos from the pulpit to um, to build up their ideas. Now, um, rolling into this next clip that we're going to play, you know, you've got a minister who prefaces the, the situation by saying, now I'm not into, I don't do like conspiracy theories, but there is this clip that a brother sent to me and it backs up everything that I already pre-believe. So I'm going to play it for you now. And then maybe I'll play it twice. The minister says, you know, and he proceeds to go into and, and to play this video for his congregation. But one of the problems of this, of this video is that well before this minister played it, it had already been proven to be a hoax. The person who, I believe the person who made the video already said, yeah, by the way, it's a hoax. I made it to, to trick people. Um, the date on the video says it's from 2005. I'm not sure exactly when the video surfaced, um, 
but it, it the video itself and, and the reason why I'm kind of describing it is because is because we, we can't really play that that portion of, of the clip because YouTube is very takedown happy with that clip <laughs> you know so uh, but the 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 premise of the video is you've got um, it's supposedly Bill Gates talking about how they found uh, a god gene inside of people and they're gonna use a flu like virus to go in and um, eradicate um, you know the god gene out of people and all this kind of stuff like that and and it, it's it's com- it's it's a it's completely a hoax. It's 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 it, there's 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 no basis in fact for this. But this minister goes and plays it in front of his congregation, and then wraps it all into at the time the current COVID pandemic and things like that. Um, and you just end up with a mess of a doctrine. And uh, yeah, I guess we can just roll into the clip. <laughs> now I told you that that if they knew what they're looking for, I'm going to play for you guys a clip that one of the brothers in the church sent this to me yesterday. Now, I'm not one of these conspiracy theorists, and I'm not a guy who goes out here and <clears throat> researches everything on the, on the web. But this is Bill Gates, and he's talking to the Pentagon about what he can do about destroying the gene of God. And he says, watch, we'll do it through a virus, through a respiratory, these are his words, you're going to hear it. It's going to be like a flu. And he says, and he said, we took religious people and we did a, a scan of their brain. And we played for them a religious text. And those that are religious Something in the frontal part of the brain lit up. I like that. Lit up. This is medical science. Are you brethren ready to play this? Now, I may play it twice. It's nine minutes long. I just want you to, I want you to hear what Bill Gates is saying. (laughs) So I'm not going to toot my own horn, but oh yeah, I'm going to toot it and I'm going to toot it twice. (laughs) And (laughs) here is the spiritual authority for the day, Bill Gates. He is your new Holy Spirit that's guiding you into truth by confirming me as the tutor of my own horn. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's crazy because, you know, there's just, there's so many problems here, but and, and one thing is like, the the minister says a brother in the church presented this to me and then i watched the video and it's like okay but there's no fact checking involved here it's just like there's a video that i saw i really liked what the video said and this this is very common um i really liked what the video said and so therefore i'm just going to play it for this entire church but by the way i'm not a conspiracy theorist i'm not one of those conspiracy theorist guys but you know listen to this video that you know people use to make conspiracies out of and by the way this whole fun vax thing and even use the term fun vax in in the clip you know because that's what it's called in 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 the hoax video um because the vaccine that and and the whole idea is like this vaccine that they're going to give people is going to eradicate the god gene and then um yeah and then it it's it's frustrating because in one sense it's like how, how do we even allow people to do this to us you know, cause I, and I know I used to be in churches like this. I used to fall for stuff like this, you know, and you know, I'd, if a minister played it in front of me, I had so much respect for that minister that I, I would almost turn my brain off and be like, well, God's speaking to him. He's in the scriptures every day trying to find, you know, <clears throat> you know, trying to find the, the truth and the light and bring it to us on a, on a weekly basis. And then you let these videos play in your congregation and, and it's, yeah, your brain is turned off and, and you're just accepting what's being said. And it's, it's very, ah, uh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> well, and where do you draw the line, right? I mean, let's say in the future that some video <clears throat> were to surface of Bill Gates talking about the fun that he had on Jeffrey Epstein's island. Are they going to play this in the church and say, now that's the real fun genes, my brother? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many situations where, you know, I've even experienced this myself, you know, and, and then, you know, a minister will play a, play the thing or talk about this news article or whatever that already lines up with what they believe. And there's no real genuine fact checking, especially in a lot of these movements, especially the movement I'm familiar with, the Brandon movement, you know, you're, 
you're taught that all the answers are inside of Branham's message. And it's either the Bible and then Branham's message, but Branham's message is the further revelation of the Bible. You even can't understand things in the me- in the Bible without running it through the message filter, they'll say. And so you have all these sorts of things and, and you're not really taught to to really think for yourself outside of this thing. So if a minister is bringing even further revelation on top of that, how are you going to fact check it? <laughs> you know, because he's saying that the, you, your fact checking device is, is Branham's message. And then by extension, the Bible of a lesser extent, because you need Branham's message to understand it. But then I guess you just need the pastor's word on top of that. And then it's like, okay, you know, it, it, there's, there's such a poor, um, you know, th- it's, there's, there's such a poor way of going about and really fact checking things and really getting to the truth of something. You know, so many times it's just this thing agrees with what I already believe. And so they just run with it. And, and it causes things like this to be played in churches. And I'm sure there's people still to this day that don't know that that clip is a hoax video. It's not even a real video. It was manufactured by somebody to trick people into thinking that this fun vax thing is a real thing because they know they just put something out and people will not fact check it. They'll just believe it and run with it. Well, and more to the point, what does it matter, right? They've got this wrong so many times. That, like I said earlier, it's the marks of the beast. It's not the mark of the beast. They have in their head for any given moment in time in which there is some tremendous fear or conspiracy that they can point to. They say that I've got all the answers and this is how it's going to play out, my brethren. And I could be wrong. (laughs) They'll sometimes preface it with that. But then they'll go (laughs) off into whatever is the spin. And then when it turns out wrong, which it will, they try it again another way and another way and another way. And in the end, what does it really matter? Because you've gone, your head is playing tug of war with itself. You've gone down all of these different paths of what is the current mark of the beast, and none of them are <laughs> turning out to be correct. Well, what does it matter? You know, the next one could be wrong. It could be right. I don't care. You know, I'm going to instead just become a pan millennialist. It's all going to pan out however it's going to pan <laughs> out in the end anyway. <laughs> Yeah. And and like I said earlier, I think that's the best approach to have because I mean personally for me, I'm not telling everybody else what to think and how to how to how to live their lives. Definitely not. <laughs> I, I, I got enough of that stuff in what I came out of, so definitely don't want to do that to anybody else. But yeah, no, it there's there's so much to be said for when you just take the time to go through and just research these things. And even maybe listen to somebody who who doesn't come to the conclusions that, that you like. You know, because sometimes, you know, you might, you know, it's just knowing all the arguments helps you craft a better argument yourself, you know, because someone says, oh, well, you know, the fun vax is, is, you know, is, is the mark of the beast. And it's like, well, if you don't know what the fun vax is or that it's a hoax video or what's going on and who made it and who created it, you know, and then, then you're working on all these layers of supposition. So it's like, yeah, you know, if you, if you go and do your research, look into these things and if the guy over the pulpit says that the fun vax is the mark of the beast, then, you know, maybe look into it a little bit and see if, <laughs> see what he's basing all of his stuff off of and nine times out of ten you'll find out that a lot of these guys don't even know what they're talking about yeah and we could you know put on our spiritual caps and say ridiculous marks of the beast we're gonna blow you away (laughs) 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 if you have weird doctrines that you'd like for us to discuss on the show you can contact us on the web you can find us at william-branham.org For an in-depth look at the dangers of being in these groups, read Weaponize Religion from Laterrain to Colonia Dignidad, available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible.